Welcome to Sculpture Studios, a project here for LastMinute.com and the Tour de France. Now, for anyone here who keeps up with cycling, we well, must have pretty strong legs for a start, you'll probably be aware of the giant caravan train of vehicles that accompany all of the cyclists on the race tour. These sponsors always come up with new ways of getting their branding or message across, and this is where we're being commissioned to create something a little bit silly, but hey, that's not going to stop us, am I right? Lastminute.com often include flamingos in their online branding, and we've been contacted with numerous design ideas to create something to go on the back of a three-wheeled bike, or trike. Three wheels, trike? I don't know. You can see from these images just how much the designs have bounced around and changed at the start of the project, so it was actually tricky to know exactly what to quote for. But once the final concept was chosen, well, then it was full steam ahead. We've been sent a list of about 50 different flamingo emojis that the brand use, and we've been asked to narrow these designs down to nine chosen finalists. These emojis are going to be brought to life on a giant frame that will sit on the back of the trike. We've chosen designs that will stand out in their own way, without requiring too much adaptation that detracts from the flamingos themselves. The frame is being made elsewhere, so for now we're marking all the sizes out on the floor of the studio and creating a rough sketch of where we think each figure will look best. Okay, I've come in in the morning, uh, starting to work at this whole frame. I'm going to be using um, a mile steel, 6mm mile steel, and by the time this is plastic coated as well, this will give it about an 8 or 10mm. Um, but we're going to create a nice skeleton out through the whole of the flamingo make sure it touches the frame as many points as possible so we can anchor it and create a stud and go through the frame and tape it up. But this is well strong enough. Just trying to work out, I think we'll keep all the head and neck sizes the same and it will only be the, the shapes of the bodies which will change. But I'm using this fiberglass as a bit of a tracing. Um, apart from just, just working out the proportions from one to nine in their frames, I'm trying to make them that have a bit of a narrative or a story going on and I really want to make these characters uh, as fun as possible so when you look at the, the whole story from one to nine uh, you've got a bit of a, uh, like a hippie hanging upside down like somebody in the exercise in here, someone reading a book um, someone doing canaletics or, or whatever it happens to be but I wanted to make sure that each of these stories or each of these images has a story to tell I think as long as all the heads are the same and the neck the same, the bodies can do what they want and uh, I might change things out of proportion a little bit just to make them more cartoony and more visual is, uh, is otherwise I don't think they'll work very well so I'm trying to get inside my head first and once I'm happy with that and then we can get on with the construction side of things just modelling up these uh, two here we have a couple of little feet one square on the floor which will sit on the frame you like this just modeling it up in clay for the moment and one doing a nice little pointy feet like ballerina style not getting too uh too worked up with the detail of these things because the whole thing is going to be plastic sprayed and it's going to be coated but we'll take a little silicon ru rubber mold off these two feet and repeat them in fast cast which is like a hard plastic stick our metal pole up through the top and blend in the feet until they come to the knees and then I'll work them up afterwards but just clay a quick model job uh, it's not very neat but they don't have to be as long as I've got enough detail and I'm making a little bit of uh, extra depth in these things because I know by the time you've put the plastic coating on they're going to be lost a little so Take one from there. Starting off in the usual way that we work, blocking out on the hot wire table and going ahead with wire brushes to start carving the forms. With wings and slender necks being made from polystyrene, naturally we need this steel work inside, but remember that these sculptures are also going outside. 
We've been told they may be hitting close to 50 miles an hour on the road at some point. They're going to be out in the elements, the wind and the rain, and these are going to be used for a few weeks at a time, so this needs to be strong enough for the job. To save having to go over every flamingo with a layer of glass fibre and resin, we're going down a little bit of an unconventional route for us on this project, and having each of these spray coated in a plastic finish. This will help keep the cost of the project down for the client by not over-engineering the surface, which shouldn't really be touched at all by the public anyway, and hopefully this will speed up the process as we don't have as much time to complete this as we'd like, as standard. For the moment, we need to carve all nine individual body shapes, create a metal internal armature that will fit each of these bodies, and hit the frame in as many places as possible. Aiden does some of the fine carving using a stonemason's riffler, so there's an impression of feathers on the wings and a 3D element to the eyes and face. The little clay feet that you saw Aiden modelling up earlier have been moulded using silicon rubber, and we're using a fast cast plastic to replicate these for all of the birds. Extra elements like the party and sombrero hat need to be carved and added to the figures, attaching everything together using a polyurethane expanding foam. Let's have a look. Can you wear it? We're going over the flamingo forms with a light, water-based plaster render so that we can sand it down and lose that polystyrene bead texture so that this doesn't show up in the plastic. We're also anticipating the metalwork frame arriving at our studio any time now so that we can start offering the birds up onto the job properly. This is a crucial step as we need to ensure the metalwork fits properly and hope that our measurements on the floor mock-up weren't too far off at the beginning. To ensure that the legs and any extra armature remains in the correct position before we send it off for spray coating, we're using a two-part putty material to lock the metalwork off at their intended angles. We're also using this same putty to create little knee joints on the legs rather than leaving them as bare rods. Aidan's now brought these down to a company the other side of London to us called Revolutionary Coatings. This two-part spray process is usually used for the inside linings of truck beds and usually far less awkward and artistic projects. Nonetheless, this was handled amazingly well, hitting every angle of each flamingo and giving them a few layers of a durable, fast-curing plastic. Each side was left to set for a few minutes before being flipped over and sprayed again, and this was just a fantastic way of locking everything together, as well as giving everything a protective shell. As many of you know by now, our usual practice is we like to have everything under our own roof and in our own control. It's not usual for us to outsource for something, as we even need to send something off to be sprayed or manually bring them down in person, but in this instance, it was massively beneficial for this project. Here we are guys, just come back 
literally this morning from Slough and had this hard coated. Let me show you this. Really, really tough, the whole thing. I can't even put my thumb in it and that's fresh. By Monday, that'll be rock hard. Got metal work running up in many, many places all the way up through it, up through the head, through the back, through the legs. It's touching in loads of spots. The artist got his beret and a brush. Again, making it touch in several spots. I'm gonna increase that leg down to the floor. Still got to put the feet on as well. Touching up the head as well. And yeah, like, like many places, so all looking good. There's the sleeper with his little eye patch on. With this one here, it hangs over the bars. I'm going to weld there, weld on the frame there, weld on the frame up here, and this hangs down, this one. But yeah, so coming along, but we need to sand them down, uh, weld them, and then spray them, and then do the artwork and put the feet on. So there's still a lot of work to do. So no hold ups. I just need to know which way this frame goes on the bike, so we weld them on facing in the right direction. But I can't tell on this frame if, if there's a back or a front. Um, we've red oxide the whole thing, and now we've, um, we've put a black satin finish on it, so it's easy enough to wash down, but it's not matte, so it goes dusty, and it's not gloss, so it's a nice satin type finish on it. Now, we've always said that those who become one of our patrons will be actively contributing to the future improvement of our videos. The first of our two new improvements is that we've gone from regular HD to now shooting in full 4K footage. Oh, look at that. So, apart from a couple of projects dotted here and there that we've yet to finish, everything is now looking brand new, crisp and shiny. The second round of contributions has been towards more powerful hardware and software to manage and edit that 4K, so that I can really go to town on bringing these videos out to you. We can't thank you enough for your continued support, and likewise to anyone else watching at the moment, perhaps one of our subscribers who hasn't yet joined our patron program, this is a fantastic way that you can support our studio and our family business and actively contribute towards the improvement of our future videos. Hello everyone, just received your email about sending one of the polymer birds up for the Thursday but uh, we're just trying to get everything welded on and we're conscious of time, we're missing a couple of days sending one up and, and getting it back so we thought we'd just show you, yeah. I mean Aiden's no weakling. I'm just trying to pull it all about. But that's the polymer bird now with uh, the, the base coat of the pink on as well. All these metal points are welded onto the frame. There's a few already been welded on. Yeah. These ones have yet to be put on, but ideally we'd like to get all the welding done as soon as possible so that we can then finalize the, uh, the artwork. That's lifting the frame via the bird, so you can see they're well and truly on there. Hopefully this should save having to, uh, to send one up and you can just simply show this to the technician. But, uh, but yeah, have a little look, see what you think. Cracking on with the artwork now, we've gone on with this light pink primer base and we're now going over with a darker pink from a raw colour that's provided by the client. Though this is literally only going to be seen for a few seconds at any one time by an individual standing by, we're making sure that details are added so that whatever you manage to look at, well you've got something to look at. And even more so that all of you guys at home can take an even better look.
With everything just about wrapped up here in the studio, it's now off to join the caravan of the Tour de France. Unless I'm very much mistaken, I believe Denmark, Belgium, Switzerland and of course France had the pleasure of seeing this whiz its way through, accompanied by all of the other brands that sponsor the event. It's always interesting for us to see what else is created, more with the mindset of what else could we have also made for the event. Maybe next year it's worth us getting in contact early with a few places to see if they need anything else made for the future. For all we know, we may be creating for lastminute.com for another event, who knows, time will tell. And I know it's lastminute.com, but we always appreciate being allowed as much time as possible so that we can take on projects just like this. We always love doing a good job, and at the end of the day, giving our clients an absolutely banging result. And oh, what's that coming over the horizon? Oh, well you look at that, there she is. Thank you very much, by the way, to the YouTubers who filmed and uploaded all of this caravan footage. It would have been great for us to have travelled out ourselves and taken some shots on location, but duty calls, and we've got some rather exciting projects still in the works here at the studio. It's great to be able to see these, though, out on the road in the public, and being cheered on, arguably, as much as the races themselves. Please feel free to leave any comments below as they're always appreciated and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for our latest videos. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram via the links below and for all of our true diehard fans out there you can now become a patron of our studio. Hopefully from watching this project you can see exactly where all of our supporter contributions go to the improvement of our future videos. So if you guys enjoy our content you know what to do. Becoming one of our credited patrons means you'll be featured at the end of our upcoming YouTube projects like these guys here, so visit the Patreon link with this video to show your support. However big or small, it's greatly appreciated from all of us here at Sculpture Studios. Thank you very much for watching.